Today we're going to make some museum hanging decorations out of salt dough. Now salt dough is one of my favourite things to make because it is super easy. I never have to look at a recipe because the only thing you have to remember is however much flour you have, you have half as much salt. So here, because I lack actually weighing scales at the moment, this is brilliant. So here I have about 500 millilitres measured in a measuring jug of flour and here 250 millilitres of salt. And I know it's exactly right because that is half the amount. You can do it in cups, um, however you want to do it, as long as there is double this than there is of that. I'm going to mix my salt and my flour together in a slightly larger bowl that I have here. It's going to be an interesting mix. So if you have a bigger bowl, I'd recommend using a bigger bowl. But um, this is all I have to hand at present, so it's what I'm going to go with. So you're going to mix them together. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a stir, just as they are. Of course, the other vital ingredient is water. So I never look at how much water because I think it is one of those things that it just varies. So easiest way to do it is just to add in a little bit of water at a time and keep mixing it until it becomes like a dough, like you're making you know, biscuits or bread or something like that. It's best to do it a little bit at a time because if you need more, you can just add a little bit more. Whereas if you do too much, you then have to add more flour and salt to try and get it back from being a bit soggy. Whereas adding a little bit as you go means you can control it and just add the water that you need. Of course, it doesn't take long, particularly in a little bowl like this, before, well, me anyway, I start making always leaving a trail of debris wherever I go, whether it's in the museum or at home. You can tell when Hannah has been making something. So you can see that is starting to look a little bit more like a dough. So I probably would normally have stirred this for a bit longer and added a bit more water before I got to this stage, but because the bowl is so little, I am just getting my hands in there just to see what state it is. And of course you can see it definitely needs some more water. So we need the water. Oh. Now I may have just failed my own advice and added far too much water. <laughs> you see, I got carried away, overexcited. So this is probably where I would say really carefully measure out some more fl some more flour and make sure you have half the amount of salt. Um, I'm going to be a bit less precise because my measuring jug is now full of water and water and flour and salt and stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. Just to show that this really isn't, you know, that much of an exact science salt dough. If you haven't quite got it half to half the salt to the amount of flour, it doesn't really matter as long as you know, you're roughly there. So there we go, I'm just going to mix in this extra flour and salt. That's looking a bit better. Let's see if I need to mix in any more. Now I could say that of course I made that mistake on purpose just to show how easy it is to fix when it all goes a bit wrong. But I don't want to speak too soon. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, so it's starting to look a lot more like a dough. I would say it's still a bit, a bit goopy. So I'm just going to, yeah, it does all sort of stick together, but yeah, it's very sticky. So I'm going to put in a bit more flour. I'm not going to worry about the salt this time, because I think at this point, really, it just needs flour. I suppose a bit like when you're making a cake, when you get the dough just right, you just add in bits of flour when you need to. That's better. So it's starting to look, if we do away with this bowl now, actually. Hmm? Those glass bowls are all in one shape, well, one piece by the end of this video, I'm going to be really happy and you definitely need to get some better baking equipment, plastic bowls, yes please. So I'm just going so to knead it a bit because you just want it to be just, just dough consistency. Okay. 
hopefully this isn't making my setup with the laptop on a stand and table will wobble a bit too much. The laptop stand is taped to the table, so luckily that can't go anywhere. There we go. That is looking pretty much how I want it to be. I have made a variety of uh, card shapes um, in place of cookie cutters, so I've based these all on objects that we have at the Norris Museum. So this, um, if you've seen my last video on how to make an under, under the Jurassic Sea moving box scene, you'll recognise as being an ammonite. So these are really common here in the Jurassic period, when the area was under a warm Jurassic Sea, they have these beautiful spiral shells which we often find fossilised in the ground around here. When they were alive, they had these lovely wriggly tentacled heads. Next up, we have the mammoth. Now, I really love mammoths because I have a real thing about elephants, and mammoths are, of course, very similar. So, um, built like an elephant, but mammoths are a bit different shape. They're also covered in their warm, shaggy fur, and this is because they were lived around here during the Stone Age, when it's much colder than it is now. It had this shaggy fur to keep them warm. They also had much bigger tusks than elephants, and these were to dig in the snow to get, up, get to the grass that was hidden underneath. This is my Roman flagon. This is somewhat based on the Roman pot game that we have in the museum. We can reassemble uh, 3D Roman pots. Now, of course, round here, uh, during Roman times, pots were a really big thing. People were always after the latest design, the latest fashion. Uh, pottery it became sort of mass produced for the first time in Roman times. There was a big pottery up in, um, in, in Water Newton, which was, of course, near Peterborough. A uh, bit of a tip, when I made these, I drew them onto paper, uh, cut them out, stuck them onto thick card, which I then cut out again. Uh, this one, because it's got a hole, found that really tricky to cut out with scissors. So when you're doing your designs, when you decide what shape you want them to be, if you're doing it this way, just really think carefully about having bits like that. I've cut along there, because I'm thinking that shouldn't be too much of a problem when I cut it out from the salt dough, so I can just hold that in place. We'll see how I get on. And last but not least, I have my Victorian skate, my Fen Runner. So this is a boot, Victorian boot that's strapped onto an ice skate. So in Victorian times, it was much colder than it is now, particularly in the winter. It used to get so cold that our river would completely freeze over. Uh, people used to go skating on it. So they'd also skate on the frozen Fen fields. They'd skate from village to village. They'd play bandy, the local form of ice hockey. They'd even have the Fen Skating Championships. These are world-class skaters that used to compete um, internationally as well. So yeah, this is my skating boot. So I've probably done it to about there. So you can see if I hold it up to the side, you can see how thick that is. So now my uh, dough is ready for cutting out the shape. I've had a thought about how to manoeuvre them around because a lot of them, particularly my ammonite, have got these really fiddly bits at the end. So I'm going to carefully lift up my dough. It would have been better, of course, if I'd done this first, but never mind. And put that with a paper underneath. Then on top goes the ammonite. This is the tricky bit. I'm going to use a knife to cut out around the shape of this guide that I have made. So obviously be very careful. I'm using just a normal knife, so it's not too sharp. Shouldn't cut myself on it. You don't need a super sharp knife to do this. Just use the edge of your guide as a guide and cut around. So this is why I've used really thick cardboard because I can push the knife against the edge. So obviously, if you've got cookie cutters, <laughs> they are easier, but it doesn't matter too much. If it doesn't really look a whole lot like what you cut out originally, this one won't, but it's still going to look very much like an ammonite. I'm just rearranging those tentacles just a little bit to get it how I wanted it to be. I've 
decided it's going to have three tentacles coming out of its head. Because that just, I think it just needed that to make that just a little bit stronger on this bit here. Break away before we begin. Looks all right. This one is going to be my mammoth because, yes, it's just the right amount of salt, though. Okay. Oh, it's all stuck. Oh, you know what? That's because I put water on it, didn't I? Before I did it. So, this video is probably going to be 101 ways not to make salt dough creatures. <laughs> oh no, yeah. It's properly stuck. There we go. Blah. But I'm not going to be deterred. I am going to try again. Here goes. Take two. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Easy does it. Come on, Mama. Oh, no. <laughs> Still sticky. Okay. Can I salvage this? Let's do it for hand modelling. Hand modelling is more fun anyway. You can get your hands mucky. You want one mucky anyway. You can get any shape you want, you can't have to worry about being neat, you just gotta get in there, get squishing and shaping. You know what, I think all things considered, I'm pretty proud that that does look just about like a mammoth. Now the question is going to be, what do I do about that little tiny hole? Am I brave enough to try, or is it a sensible thing to do, to maybe just leave it? without the hole. See how it looks. Just making sure all the edges are coming away. I'm not yanking it suddenly. It will all rip. Go. Oh, has it stuck? No, we're okay. Let's just put that together a bit more. You can kind of see where it was meant to be, so I wonder if I can cut it out without using Ooh. yeah if you guys do this either get yourself some nice cookie cutters like you've got some already or make sure your designs are really super simple don't do doing fiddly bits like I've done unless you're feeling really really brave maybe it'll work better for you maybe you have better luck than me Ashley doesn't look terrible does it there we go Right, and there we have my fen skating boot with blade. So one thing I forgot to do when I was carefully cutting them out and shaping them was to make a little hole in the top because I want these to be hanging, ideally. So I have here a straw. I'm just going to stick it in to each one in the hope that we can make these so that they can be hung up once they're dry. There we go, so just stuck it in. I can see through the paper that it's gone all the way through to the other side. I'm making it quite big so I can fit some string through easily. Also, you want to be at least a centimetre away from the edge so that it doesn't break either, so it's nice and strong when it's hung up. Here we have my salt dough creations drying on a sunny windowsill. You can oven bake them, put them on a really low temperature in the oven for a few hours and that normally cooks them up and dries them out. But you do have to be careful with that because it is a bit more likely to have them crack, which is why I prefer a sunny windowsill over a few days. If you can do that, I'd recommend it. But of course, if you want to be very careful and do the oven, by all means go for it. So in a few days, I'll hopefully be able to show you what they look like when they're painted. So it's been about three or four days. I've completely lost track of what day I actually started this on. <laughs> I think it's a similar situation to um, how most people are finding things at the moment. But they've been a few days. Um, just leave them as long as it takes, really. So um, you can tell they're done when they're 
hard. Um, you can tap them. There's no soft bits. There's no wet bits. Um, both sides look like sort of white, white and hard. So I've turned them over quite a lot as I, you know, haven't got a whole lot of things on my on my um, to do list at the moment. I've been checking them quite regularly, turning them over, making sure both sides get exposed to sunlight, and warmth. And yes, this is where we are now. So this is the mammoth. I was going to start with the ammonite that I made first, but unfortunately it had it all set up, ready to go, and then I spilt my water all over it. So it got a bit soggy and a bit sticky. So that one is now drying out again. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that will be ready uh, by the time I've painted the other three. If not, we'll come to it later. been a bit too generous with the black on that one. It looks like it might have burnt a bit in the kiln, but I quite like the colours. I quite like the overall effect of the salt dough because it's kind of quite rustic almost, so it kind of looks like a really old pot. Now I'm going to make the wooden, the wooden sole that the skate was screwed into, as in Victorian times they couldn't just stick uh, a blade to a shoe. They didn't have special skating shoes either, they just had the leather boots that they wore every day and their skates that they used to screw into the soles of them. So when they took their boots off, their skates off their boots, they had holes in the soles of them. So then they had to stick them up, stuff stuff inside them, stop their feet getting wet when it rained. I would do laces but they feel like they would be far too fiddly so I'm quite happy I think to leave it just there like that. The good news is that my ammonite survived. It survived the uh, tentacle situation that we had when I made it. And it's also survived me tipping a glass of water over it as well. So I'm ready to get painting. As the colors that I've painted my objects are pretty um, samey, bit brown, bit gray, <laughs> I thought I'd make the hangers uh, really brightly coloured so they'll stand out and brighten the whole things up um, and I've decided to do this by using different coloured wool so these are a couple that I've already prepared I'm choosing three different coloured strands and I'm plaiting them so the easiest way to do this is I find a tie knot in the end of the three masking tape it down so you've got the three strands then coming towards you and then you can plait and of course the way to plait is have two on one side one on the other and the one on the other side comes across and into the middle of the next two. And then that's repeated from the other side. So now one on this side comes across into the middle. We'll try it again. One on this side, across to the middle, across to the middle, across to the middle, across to the middle. Just make sure as you go that you pull out the ends because they're quite long. They will get tangled up. And once you've got them to however long you want them to be, make sure there's enough left at the end for you to tie a knot in the bottom. Just like so. There you go. And then if you want them to match end to end, you can then just trim off like so. My mammoth is just about dry. I have prepared my hanging uh, wool <laughs> for him. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to hang these. Now a tip that I have for making them when they hang so they don't sort of turn onto their side, is to do it this way. So I'm folding the uh, hanging bit in half, and I'm taking the middle, and I'm threading the middle through the hole, like so. Then, that's so I've got a loop that comes out this way. And then I'm going to thread the two ends through the loop, and then pull them tight. So there, there we go, my mammoth is completed.